the helicopter. Talk about bow handle to bow handle, risky business in first defense. It doesn't get any closer than this. Going into checkpoint number two, both of these boats are coming very close to each other, and each, uh, as they went down the straightaway, Steve Dorsett here in the risky business with John Bruno and the throttles. And Mike Novick roaring around the checkpoint in hot pursuit of Thoroughbred, which is just in front of us for the lead in the race. We're gonna follow him right around the turn. You can see it's not as calm as it looks in there. There's quite a few wakes in here and they're coming around some very tight turns, very tight the turning conditions. They've made up quite a bit of distance on the lead boat thoroughbred in these two turns, both boats. And they're threatening to pass them in this straightaway. So the battle continues with risky business. And, of course, first defense for second place while thoroughbred, B-39 ahead. These boats in Pro 1 and 2 may be outboard driven. They may be smaller. But I'll tell you one thing, Art Ekman, they are fast. They're having a fun ride, that's for sure. Currently in fourth place, Alan Shapiro and his partner. The question is, where is Rick Felson, who's in a points battle? Here's Popeye's high risk with Rick. They're not running well, but he's desperately trying to get ahead of risky business to win that points race. Felson doesn't like running just to finish. I only have one problem with that. I like to come in first, and, uh, you know, with the possibility of the motors breaking, we got bridges, buoys out there. You have so many little obstacles. I think you really just have to go out there and just try to run your fastest race and, and just be ahead. I can't just worry about one boat and try to come in fifth and have him come in sixth. I want to win the race. Rick Felson in high risk in one of the few boats remaining that not only doesn't have a canopy, doesn't even have a small windshield for deflection. Unlike the B4 gone again, riding in sixth place, you can see both the driver and the throttle man are enclosed in canopies. They're currently sixth. Looking at Eastern Express from St. Clair Shores, Michigan, these guys are down and out of the race going home under one engine power. Let's take a look at Pro 2 now, leading Conk Attack. They won two races already in the series, one in New Orleans, the other one in New York. They are running well, and great adventures coming up right behind them. Great adventure. They have one win on the season. That was in California at Long Beach. They've got a second and two-thirds also on the season. They're in good position right now. They've got the points title sewed up. They're just racing for pride right now in second place. And in third place, the winner at Grand Haven, Michigan, in that rough water, the deep V boat splish splashed the S-32. Jim, they also had an impressive appearance in Long Beach, their first outing of the year, taking a second place. Now, John DeLea told us earlier, the water conditions today are ideal for this special edition boat leading the open class. Well, the positions have reversed in the open class as John and J.D. D'Elia have uh, taken a small lead now over the cube of Joe Mock and Harold Smitty Smith. Uh, the distance separating them is not very great. It's still a tight boat race, but Dirty Laundry is uh, falling now maybe 100 yards behind Special Edition. We're doing 118 miles an hour, so it looks like uh, Special Edition is setting the pace and challenging Joe Mock to stay up with them. They're making a very bold move, putting the hammer down at this point in the race, trying to put some distance between themselves and Dirty Laundry, and then perhaps coast to the finish. So it's a bold move. We'll see if it pans out over time. The special edition has now pulled out more than a football field in length. Special edition's advantage, they're quicker in the turns. And they're making good use of that as Dirty Laundry then picks up the slack on the straightaways. A great back and forth battle here in the open class. Don't count out Joe Mock and Harold Smitty Smith. They're great competitors. It's been a close battle for, with everybody all year long. Nobody's been far out in front. Nobody's been far behind. And uh, it's a good feeling to be here. This is a one race, uh, win or lose. So the strategy is going to be go out and uh, run as hard as you can, as long as you can. Yeah, but couldn't you go out there and maybe break well we can't let him get in too far in front of us and, and i'm sure he won't let us get too far in too far in front of him uh, we're going to try to if, if the engines are overheating or any problems we'll back off but we'll basically be running as hard as we can safely the 
cool sounds of Joe Mock, and he is cool in that cockpit along with his partner, Harold Smitty Smith. Currently in third, thoroughbred in the open division. They're still strong behind those points leaders, and they're in great position, Jim. Also in great position and leading in the Superboat class, Don Johnson, Richie Powers in the Superboat Team USA, averaging close to 100 mile an hour. We'll be back with more action. OPT style from Marathon, Florida in just a moment. Our leaders, Team USA, running strong for the first time this year in this final regular race of the season. What are Don Johnson's plans for next year? You know, we're still uh, in the hunt for sponsors. You know, uh, the sport is a, it's a great sport. It, uh, you know, it attracts, you know, just uh, a lot of people. We, we race in exotic locations, and, but uh, still, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a new sport uh, uh, relatively in terms of the corporate sponsors, and we're hoping that this season has proven that we're uh, for real, and they'll come and uh, get aboard for next year. Looking for real right now after disappointing breakdowns have plagued this crew throughout the season. You're looking at 50 feet of Superboat Team USA. Don Johnson in the driver's seat. At the throttles is Richie Powers. In the back seat, the navigator, John Sadowski, who built this boat. And he's a happy guy. Look at him give us the salute today. Running second, Super Hawaii, the deep V, the only diesel-powered boat in the field. Interesting combination that's been calculated, not an evolution. Well, obviously, Super Hawaii is a V-bottom manufacturer, OK? We manufacture and build V-bottom boats, and we want to and, and basically have to run a product that, that we manufacture. And because of that, uh, uh, we'd like to think that, uh, that because of the diesel power in the V-bottom, that we can go out and run basically wide open all day long that the cats can't do. And that's shown in the history of the sport. Cats go out and they run uh, wide open and believe me, they're not gonna go the distance. With a diesel package and a V-bottom, you can run wide open all day long. You can run 110, 115 miles an hour and maintain that pace. Um, so that's the approach we're taking right now is diesels and V-bottom boat. The veteran Bill Sorois looking for dependability and speed in the Super Hawaii. And he's a veteran that knows what he's talking about. He was with the Popeyes racing team and throttled this very boat who's running third just a couple of years ago. Chuck Norris, in his first year of OPT racing, assesses the season. I think they did well. I think OPT was very organized this year. And I think all the uh, men involved in OPT are uh, really dedicated to it. And I think it's going to grow more and more every year. And Jim, I have a feeling that Chuck Norris is not going to stand on shore and watch it grow year after year. He's having too much fun as we look at Al Copeland and Bob Idoni in the Popeyes 113, currently running in fourth place. Meanwhile, the fifth place 213 Popeyes Dash Coker report a steering problem, Art. Yes, the helicopter told us Stan Ware was struggling with the wheel earlier, and this is a very dangerous place to have a steering problem. It looks like they might have to go through the bridge guards uh, by the use of the throttles, not the steering wheel. That's exactly what Tom is doing, steering with the throttles to get under the seven-mile bridge, and, whoa, he makes it out to open water. Oh, that was a lucky break. Now we're looking at the sixth place Apache Kid, and if you notice, the left engine does not have any cooling water coming out. They're down the two engines, but maintaining sixth place for the Apache. In seventh, Little Caesars Pizza. Trey's Martin, not only the throttle man for Peter Markey here, he's the crew chief for both NXS and Little Caesars. He's having his problems today. Not running as fast as he liked. Little Caesars wants to keep it together, though, because they still might have an outside chance at the championship. That's because in excess is definitely out of the race. And here is the Bud Dry, the sixth Superboat to drop out. They started with 13. They're down to seven as we check the open class. Oh, what a great battle we have. And here's the classic example of the power generated by Dirty Laundry, the Red Boat, overtaking special edition for first place. More power on the straightaways, Jim. Well, that's the way it proves out today. On the turns, it seems the lighter boat Special Edition has the advantage, but in the long straightaways, such as we're witnessing here, it's the Red Boat with Smitty Smith on the throttles, Joe Mock and Dirty Laundry taking back first place once again in this seesaw battle for the Open Championship. And the seesaw battle will determine the season championship as well as Dirty Laundry and Special Edition battle it out one and two. It's Thoroughbred for third, a very consistent ride for this team. A 38-foot Cougar inboard is the number 39 thoroughbred in open class. This is a sister ship 
a 32-foot skater, outboard-driven, P39, thoroughbred leading in Pro 1 class. In second place, Risky Business, Stephen Dorsich. They won the last two races, Grand Haven and New York, in a class with the same hauls, engine power, same specs. What is his edge? I think the edge is just uh, keeping a straight line. You know, the old saying, fly like the, uh, co the crow flies. Uh, that's what we're trying to do here. Uh, not uh, deviate around the course, uh, stay right on course, and get through it really cleanly. That's, that's the main thing. And if he stays on course and gets through it cleanly in second place where he's at right now, he'll be the national champion in Pro 1. Here's our third place Pro 1 craft, Team USA. They're still sounding sharp and running smooth. At Popeye's high risk, with lots of gestures from Rick Felson to John Engel, he has to catch risky business if he's to win the championship today. He's two slots back. In Pro 2, great adventure, ending a championship season in style. They've taken over the lead in this final race of the regular season. They've already wrapped up the season title, so what a way to go out, Jim. Ah, uh, the Gazelle brothers, to be congratulated. Will you look at this? In open class, once again, the Delias have taken the lead in open class, as Special Edition leads Dirty Laundry. We'll be back with more exciting action from Marathon, Florida, in just a moment. Jim Hendrick from Marathon, Florida. Welcome back to the Marathon Offshore Challenge OPT National Championships. Team USA, still our leader in the Superboat Division. And Super Hawaii running a very consistent second in good position to win this race should something happen to Team USA, Jim. And Al Copeland's Navy occupy the next three slots. And here's 113 with Al Copeland at the wheel in Popeye's Diet Coke. And, of course, the uh, real concern of the Popeyes team is this one right here, number 13. With Chuck Norris, Denny hedges the throttle, and they're playing it very smart. By now, they know in excess is out of the race. Their concern is just keeping ahead of Little Caesar's Pizza. Stan Ware and Tom McCurry have wisely shut down after they had the steering problems with the other Popeyes entry. They'll race again, and by the time they do at the World Championships, Stan Ware should become a father for the very first time. Jim, a big development now in the Open Class Special Edition is down. That's J.D. D'Elia looking into the engines. Could this be a dream slipping away for this father and son team? All day long, they fought with dirty laundry back and forth, changing leads several times, and now they're going very slow motion. They may be out of this race. Oh, look at this. I can't believe it. Smitty Smith in his shorts looking back in the stern. Dirty Laundry is also out. Both of the top boats are having problems. Can you believe this? The national championships on the line. It now depends on which boat gets started first. Joe Mock getting back in the cockpit along with Harold Smitty Smith. Can they get this boat started? Yes, they can. It's moving out. Now the question is, can they catch up with Special Edition and get back up to speed? They will very easily if Special Edition doesn't get their boat going. Here comes Jordy Laundry getting on a plane. Harold Smitty Smith made the adjustments. Joe Mock has to be happy. Oh, Smitty must have put a smile in Joe Mock's heart right there because the championship on the line, as you said, Jim, and they are back up to speed right now. They're gaining good ground. And we have a report from the helicopter that Special Edition still has not restarted and got up to speed. Dirty Laundry coming on strong and should take the lead momentarily. Meanwhile, Thoroughbred V39 leads and has for some time in Pro 1. They have not raced this well this long before. It might be good signs ahead for the P39 Thoroughbred team. Risky business in second place. They're having their problems a little bit now, slowing back. Let's go up to Rich Lures, who is over the scene. That's right, Art. The question out here in Pro Stock is just exactly what's going on in the risky business. They've slowed down considerably. Rich Felson is making up all kinds of distance on them. Uh, they've dropped way off the pace in Pro Stock. No longer going for the win. The thoroughbred uh, is way out in front of them now. So basically, I don't know whether they've had some engine trouble. The middle engine seems to be trimmed up a little bit. And had they got a big enough lead over Felson that they can hang in there, and maintain the uh, the victory. They're doing 70 miles an hour. Felsen is close to 100. So uh, how how much distance can Rich Felsen make up with a 30 mile an hour uh, speed advantage? Uh, 
Uh, as we come down to in the last few laps of the pro stock race, they're looking over their shoulders. They're looking for Felsen. John Bruno does not want to see Rich Felsen's bow at this point in time. And they obviously have got a problem, and that problem has slowed them down a great deal. Attrition is the big concern right now. And, Jim, maybe the high speeds are starting to take their heavy toll. I believe you're right, but look at Popeye's Iris with John Engel and Rich Felsen. Frustration earlier. Now they are in the hunt. Now they have the scent of victory. And let's look at the attrition. Superboats have a total of six boats out. Open have lost four. Meanwhile, in other classes, two are out of Pro 1, and in Pro 2, Splish Splice is out. 13 boats are down. And leading the Superboat Division right now, Team USA, Don Johnson, Richie Powers, looking for their first victory of the year. This is their strongest race by far. And the most consistent race by far for this team. We'll be back with the finale in just a moment. It's the last lap, the home stretch for the Pro 1 class. Thoroughbred has crossed the finish line. All eyes now are in the battle for the national championship. Can Rick Felson in high risk catch Steve Dorsich in risky business? He thinks so. Look at those arms flailing. Telling John Engel, go! We got him! Risky business is going to be passed. Think of the different emotional gamut. Highs for this boat, high risk. Lows and disappointment for Risky Business, who led throughout the race until this final drive to the finish line. A tremendously strong finish for Rick Felson and John Engel, especially after having engine problems earlier in the race, Jim. But they hung together, and they obviously have the strongest machine right now for that national championship drive. One happy crew. Congratulations to P-39 Thoroughbred, who wins the event. But for this boat, Popeye's High Risk is a national champion for Pro One Class 1990 by virtue of the points accumulated throughout the season. Let's take a look at the race results. As you mentioned, Jim, Thoroughbred in first place, Popeye's High Risk second. In Pro 2, Great Adventure wins the race and the season championship for Pro 2. Team USA will take the checkered flag first place in this event. But the big deal is, who is the national champion, Art? That's right, Jim. Team USA winning their first race of the year today. And fourth place, that's the big position because number 13 Popeye's Diet Coke with Chuck Norris at the wheel has finished high enough for the National High Point Championships for 1990 in the Super Boat Division. Now in the open class, Dirty Laundry is not only our winner today, but also our open national champion. Joe Mock and Harold Smitty Smith getting the big trophy for the first time. Here's the race results, Dirty Laundry. Good, consistent performance from Thoroughbred and Special Edition down in fifth. Jim has made his way to the dock area now to talk with today's Super Bowl winner. Now, this gives you a lift going into next year. Oh, yeah. You know, this is, uh, this is the kind of thing. First of all, I have a first-class team. These guys don't complain. They don't, uh, they don't uh, war you know, mince with the, the small stuff. They're all professionals. They, they're, uh, they're, as, they're as, as strong and as tough as they need to be to meet the challenge and meet the competition. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm very fortunate to have each and every one of them. And I'd like to thank my sponsors, Chevrolet, uh, Chevrolet Motors. They've been with us. They've come in this, this year and really brought their technology and their understanding of uh, motors and uh, sports uh, sports racing and stuff into our engine program and without them we could we wouldn't have the reliability when we get back we'll be hearing from all the national opt champions and witness their victory celebration the crowd has gathered dockside to view the winners bill and warren gazelle our national champions in pro two and jim is with them now bill this isn't the first time you've taken a national championship no we've won a couple of times before but uh, this is the most thrilling one why well it, the circuit is so much different now with opt uh the boats the, the, the whole situation of uh, racing is just tremendous uh we love coming down here and the crowds are so much bigger and uh, just very, very exciting. Warren, you haven't taken that grin off your face since you came in with that checkered flag. Yeah, I wanted to really win this race. Why? Um, 
besides the national championship? It was the last race of the year. Uh, we had the national championship locked up, and it's always nice to take the last race of the year. Here's how the Pro 2 national point results came out with Great Adventure on top, Conk Attack in second. What a great finish in Pro 1, the national championships. Jim is with Rick Felson. What happened, Rick? Uh, well, you know, we had a real weak motor the whole way, and we were in fourth place, and uh, I just tried to stay there and hope, you know, he would break down. And sure enough, right at the end, we saw a big cloud of water. I trimmed the motors up, and I said, I think we're going to catch him. Sure enough, about 50 yards from the finish, we went right by him, and uh, it's an exhilarating feeling, especially when you think the whole race you're going to lose. After a great competition, high risk ends up in front of risky business. Our national champions in the open class, Joe Mock and Harold Smith. Now, you guys didn't have it all that easy for about three and a half laps. You battled, of course, John and J.D. D'Elia in the uh, special edition. Right. Uh, it was neck and neck for three, three and a half laps. Uh, everybody was running uh, wide open, and then something happened to special edition, a mechanical breakdown, I assume, and then we were all alone. Yes, but you didn't, you, you weren't without your problems either. I heard you guys shut down a little bit. Smitty, tell me what happened. We had numerous problems. We had an alternator, it looks like, go out on the uh, one engine and uh, lost battery power. And, with electronic injection and all, you can't run without power. So we stopped. I went back and changed batteries, went to the other batteries, and ran the whole boat on one system. Uh, that worked okay. We had some overheating problems today, but uh, came through in the end. You guys seem pretty calm for taking the national championships. Or, or hasn't it sunk? Has it sunk in yet? Well, I kind of expected it today. <laughs> Special Edition's fifth place finish today, and Dirty Laundry's win gives Joe Mock and Harold Smith the national championship. Now Jim is with our Super Bowl champions. You're looking at a big part of the national championship team for 1990 OPT Super Bowls. you got to really be thrilled. Oh, yeah, it's exciting to uh, win your first time out. You know, you, of course, you like always like winning, whether it's your first year or fifth year. And uh, being my first year and winning the national championship, it just uh, puts the icing on the cake for me. Danny Hedger, uh, you, you you're beaming. Oh, I'm really happy. Everything went according to plan today. The boat performed perfectly. It's just a great day for Popeyes. Can you explain the feeling you have right now? Well, it just, uh, it's just exciting. It's exciting to uh, get into a new sport and to be able to come out as a national champion is uh, just a, a thrill of a lifetime, really. In the Superboats in excess, unable to finish today, but Popeyes Diet Coke, a 148-point victory for the national championship. Now our national champions in review. The Gazelles from Bricktown, New Jersey, winning Pro 2 in Great Adventure. Two wins on the season, one in California, that was Long Beach, and capping it off with a great win here today. In Pro 1, it was Rick Felson out of Great Neck, New York, along with John Engel. Felson with two first-place finishes, one in Miami and one in New Orleans. No worse than a third-place finish the whole year. In open class, Joe Mock and Harold Smith. What a year they had. Four first-place finishes, one in Miami, one in New Orleans, and Grand Haven along with Marathon. Our Superboat National Champion Chuck Norris and Al Copeland's Popeye's Diet Coke. They won in Long Beach and again in New York. Jim, what a great finale to the OPT regular season. It surely was a great finale and a great season, and congratulations to the OPT guys. John Carbonell and his staff and all the original directors that formed this group thrilled millions of fans across the country, starting in the spring on the West Coast and concluding here today. Great job, guys. Great job. The regular season is now complete. Next, down the road, 50 miles south to Key West, OPT's next stop, the World Championships. For our producer, William and Bowden, Jim Hendrick, and Rich Lures, I'm Art Ekman saying thank you for being with us for a tremendous season of offshore racing. Offshore Challenge was sponsored by the Monroe County Tourist Development Council, the Florida Keys, and Key West. Popeye's Famous Fried Chicken and Biscuits. Promotional consideration was provided by Ferro Blanco Marine Resort, offering the best of island life, unsurpassed fishing, diving, sumptuous dining, and full-service marina. Ferro Blanco, 